Let's go JavaScripting! Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting edition of Boring JavaScript. I'm your host, The Virtual Void, aka Mike Smith, and today we're taking a look at the Character Encoding API. Now, if you're with us for our last Boring JavaScript, we talked about the from car code and the from code point, which allowed us to be able to put those really cute, fancy emoticons on our browser screen, but there's a problem with those. They don't work very well with different character encoding sets. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there is a standardized character encoding. Uh, one of them is it's actually it's called UTF-8, but, but there is a couple bunch of different other ones that allows us to be able to specify all the different characters that are available to us in a specific standardized format. So if you wanted just regular letters or if you wanted a uh, different, you know, maybe Japanese script or all those different emoticons, each one has a different Unicode character encoding or UTF-8. So JavaScript gives you the, has different routines in the encoding API to be able to uh, interpret those particular values that are coming in or to be able to produce them. You wanna see how they work? Let's get started. Now there are actually four different encoding APIs, but we're gonna take a look at two of them for this session, text encoder and text decoder, and they're extraordinarily simple to use. The idea here is that you would first of all create a new instance of each one of them, either text encoder or text decoder. Now there is an optional argument for each one of them, and those, that argument is what character set you're working with. And if you don't specify an argument, we're gonna be working with UTF-8. And since that's what pretty much is what's universal, we're going, I've just kept everything at UTF-8. Now, text encoder is takes basically characters characters within an individual JavaScript string and encodes that into the UTF-8 format. In this case, UTF-8 for whatever character for whatever character set that you specified, it will encode it into. So, what I would expect out of text encoder is a un, uh, is an unsigned 8-bit binary array of u different Unicode characters to represent the string that we're going to be outputting. And we'll show you that here in just a second. Decoder goes the exact opposite. It takes that un unsigned integer, 8-bit integer array of different numbers and then converts that into a US, what, the, what they call a USV string. That USV string is then, is then reinterpreted into a string that JavaScript understand, like a DOM string or something. And then at that point, we just operate it as if it's just the regular string. So they're both very easy to use. So let's take a look, quick, quick look at both decode and encode uh, first. We're, we'll first look at decode. So here's what I'm gonna do with the decode. The decoder, basically I'm gonna be using one of the methods, pretty much it's about the only method in there, in which I'm going to decode the different values. And where did I get these values? I am going, just like we did with, our, with the from character code uh, video from last week, we're gonna get these codes as, as common delimited characters from an input field and then we're gonna map those out into a series of different values. But instead of putting them into an array, we're gonna set it up into a, into a unsigned 8-bit integer array, because that's what that is the argument that decode will take. So once we decode this, it will take every one of those values, and then it will transform the, it will figure out what uh, character codes that are going to be are needed, and it will produce a string. So let's take a quick look at that. Let's go over to our uh, browser. Now what I'm going to do here, uh, first of all, is I'm going to put in the numbers. We're going to try to produce here a a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is the same thing that we used in our in our from character code video uh, last week. Now I'm going to put in the character codes that we used in that example, which was the a the square plus b squared equals C squared. So if I click on the print it, it should print those characters out into the text box underneath it. So let's click on print it and there we are. Huh, it broke. Why did it break? Because these are not valid UTF-8 numbers. And this is something that should be very important to understand here is that you can't just simply take a string and just print out and just convert it into the character codes that you're familiar with that JavaScript uses, that the browser uses, and be able to use those as UTF-8 characters. As you can tell here, the, the superscript 2 is completely missing. So this actually needs to be converted into 
Unicode characters. So let me put in now the Unicode character number sequence here. That's the Unicode sequence for what we did. So let's take a quick look at what it is. Well, here's the letter A. The letter A happens to be less than 128. Basically what it is is that a Unicode character is usually either one byte long, two bytes long, three bytes long, or four bytes long, depending upon the size of it. I'm not going to go into great details. You can just take a look up on Wikipedia. It actually has a very good little article on it saying this is how it actually works. This is how you can figure out what, what, the, what the actual numbers are, are to be. So since the letter A is less than 128, because anything put up to 128 is one byte long, that's the letter A right there. Now, from anything from 128 to, and I can't remember the exact number, is going to be two bytes. So this number right here represents the sec, represents the uh, super, superscript number two. The 43 here is the plus sign. The 98 is the B. Here's the 194, 178 again, which is the superscript two. Here's the equal sign, the letter C. And then the 194, 178, which is again the superscript 2. So if I click on print it, ta-da! Works like a champ. So now what I have here is I've used text decoder to be able to decode an entire sequence of numbers to represent UTF-8 characters and that will give me the string that I need. So text decoder has interpreted this into temporarily into what they call a USV string and then that goes into a DOM string which is what JavaScript can work for. So now if we go back to again on our particular example that we had used last time. We also did Japanese for hello, which is konnichiwa. I hope I got that pronounced correctly. These are the numbers that we used. So if we click on print it, uh -uh, it doesn't work. Well, what about the Unicode version? Well, let's click on the Unicode version and see what happens. That's the Unicode version. In this particular case, there are three characters per each one. That's three characters right there. Three characters right there, next three characters, next three characters, and then finally, next three characters, five characters. So when I click on print it, I sure hope that's Konnichiwa. I really have no clue, but that's what, that's what Google Translate says it was. So that's what text decoder will do for you, is it will take all these different numbers, which represents a UTF-8 number, and it will automatically uh, convert that over into a form that JavaScript can understand. So next, let's take a look at the text encoder. So now let's take a look at the text encoder. Now remember, text decoder took a long array of Unicode values and converted that into a string. Text encoder does the exact opposite. It takes a string and converts it into Unicode characters. And again, that's extraordinarily easy to use. Again, just like before, we, we created a new text encoder. And all we have to do here is just call the encode method. I'm getting my characters from my, tick, my input text box, which we'll see here in just a minute. And I'm running the encode method on it to be able to encode that into the Unicode values. And that's going to be encoded into an unsigned integer, unsigned 8-bit integer array. So all I'm going to do is just do a little join method on it, and just so, so we'll have a comma there. So I can output it as the comma delimited uh, values for the, for the Unicode characters, and that's it. There's, there's really not, nothing much to it past that point. That's really all there is. So let's just go ahead and go to, straight to our browser. Let's take a look at it. So if I was to type in uh, A, B, C, for example, since both all, all three uh, characters, A, B, and C, are within the first 128 characters, this should just be three numbers. And sure enough, it is. And we can test that by putting 97, 98, 99 up here in the character codes in the decoder, and it comes up with ABC. So that works out great. So I remember this works for any type of characters. So for example, like I said, any type of characters, let's put our example that we had in our from character code video last week. If a zombie eats a brain, will you make you into a clown? And ask the question there. Now, these happen to be encodings within the 120,000 number level. So this will actually take four bytes per character to be able to represent as a UTF-8. So I expect four bytes here, four bytes here, only one byte for the equal sign because equal is less than 128, four bytes for the clown, and a question mark for the 
uh, it will, well, it should just be one byte. So I should have four, eight, nine, 13, 14 characters, 14 bytes, excuse me. I click on print it. There it is. There's our first, there's our zombie. There's our brains. There's our equal sign. There's our clown. And there is our question mark. Does it actually work? Well, let's take a look. Let's copy it over into the decoder and click on print it. Yep, sure enough, works like a champ. So text encoder is a wonderfully convenient way to take any character, no matter what it is, and immediately convert it into UTF-8 format. Very easy, very simple to use. So what is all of this good for? Next, I wanna show you a real life example of why you would want to use things like text decoder and encoder, and that will be next. So let's now take a look at a real world example of why it is important to know about text encoder and text decoder. I have a little browser program here that uh, when I click on fetch that text, it will do a fetch command to a local resource that has, it is a file that has nothing but UT8 uh, characters in it. And I got that from this great little site up here called UTF-8 Sampler. Thank you very much to Frank DeCruz and the Kermit Project for supplying this. And what I've done here is I've taken uh, about from right here on up, all these different Unicode characters, stripped out the HTML and everything, and saved that into my file system. And what that does is it represents a file out there in the wild blue yonder out there that has UTF-8 characters, not just simple string characters, but UTF-8 characters. And so we're gonna be using the fetch command to be able to fetch that data and interpret it correctly to where it, it since it's a UTF-8 character, we will have it displayed exactly as it's being displayed here on the screen. So let's flip over to our code and let's take a look at that. And it's very simple here what I've done here, and I've done a video on fetch before. You can take a look at that uh, a long time ago. So I'm doing a fetch here on my, on my UTF-8 uh, sampler uh, file, and then I'm getting the response. And what I'm doing here is that um, I am now getting the stream reader that is directly associated with the response itself, and I'm reading all of the data from that stream reader. And I'm doing this on purpose here to be able to extract the data. So to show you how from code point and all those other ones that we used in the last one doesn't quite work on UTF-8, I am now going to basically do a from code point and grab all the data from the chunk that came in from, from the system. So I'm gonna use from code point to return the promise and I'm gonna put that, all that data into the text contact. Real simple, not no big deal. So let's flip over to our code, I mean, sorry, our browser, and let's click on fetch that text and it looks like junk. I mean, take a look at this. Does that look like this? No, not at all. So what happened here? Well, the problem here is, is that we used, let's go back to our code, actually, that we use the from code point, which is the way I showed you last week to be able to print out all those special characters and special emoticons. But the problem is from code point doesn't work on UTF-8 formatted code. So what we have to do is we have to interpret that UTF-8 code to be able to make, put it into a form that JavaScript understands. And what do we use for that? Well, that is real easy to use because we just covered it in that last video. It is the decoder. Da -da -da -da. So let's replace some code here. And now I've got something that's a little bit different. I've created myself a new decoder. And the only thing that's changed here is instead of doing the from code point, I'm now doing the decoder.decode of the chunk. And that's it. I'm not doing anything different. But now that I'm using decoding, it's gonna sit there and say, hey, okay, I now have an array here that has nothing but UTF-8 characters in it. So now it's my job to be able to interpret that as the UTF-8 code. So let's flip over to our browser and let's refresh our screen. As you can see, it still looks, like, still looks ugly. Let's refresh. Now let's click on fetch that text. And da -da, now it works like a champ. There's our great rune. That should match that. It matches it absolutely perfectly. So I was able now to read that UTF-8 code that I have on my local system here and use the fetch command to be able to fetch it as UTF data and not as regular text data. So using things like text decode and encode if you wanted to go the other route to be able to write a UTF file is a fantastic way of making sure that your text that you've typed in there 
follows the UTF-8 format so that other programs outside of JavaScript, outside of everywhere else, can be able to read it correctly and display it the way they need to do. Now, I do want to show you one thing here is that I have really kind of hacked this together here to be able to show you the example. The fact of the matter is if you're using, this is kind of a little extra here, if you're using things like Fetch, Fetch will do it for you automatically. That All that code there I could actually change to be just this. Fetch actually has a, spe a special method called text that will automatically convert it from UTF-8 into a readable form for your particular browser. So, you know, there's one of those things you want to be able to take a look at your particular operation, your particular uh, project that you're doing, and you want to be able to take a look at all the APIs that are available and use whatever is best for you. So this is this is obviously a heck of a lot better than having to split the code. Let me just bring up that other code one more time. I know this is going to look like it could be an error here, but that would just, what the heck. There we go. Got them both on the screen now at the same time here. So as you can tell here, basically, this is a heck of a lot easier than having to split this up into a, a stream reader and be able to read of all read of all the data. And, and that's great. So the idea here is that you want to try to let JavaScript do as much of the work for you as possible. And so there's a lot of times you're not going to have to worry about using text encoder and decoder. But it's extremely important, as we showed earlier, is that if you're writing your own code for some, for some reason and you're suddenly getting all these weird characters printed on the screen where you don't expect that, you're probably dealing with UTF-8 code, uh, unicodes and you're not interpreting it correctly. So knowledge of what text encoder and text decoder will do will be great. Now, before we finish up here, there is one other thing I wanted to mention. I did mention there were four different encoding uh, APIs. One's called Text Encoder, one's called Text Decoder, the other one's called Text Encoder Stream, the other one's called Text De yeah, I'll make sure I got that. Yeah, Text Decoder Stream and Text Encoder Stream. Now those are basically text encoders and text decoders that operate on streams. Now I'm not going to show you that this time. We're going to be doing a whole big, huge uh, growing JavaScript on streams a little bit later on. So you know, kind of keep that in the back of your mind. When we get to that, we'll show you how that works. But for right now, this is what you need to do for doing text encoder and text decoder. And that's all there is to text encoder and text decoder parts of the encoder API. I hope you enjoyed our video. Hope I didn't bore you to death. Please make sure you click on the like button below and subscribe to this channel to get updates whenever we post new boring JavaScript videos. Also, go to www.boringjavascript.com to view all of our videos or see everything we have at www.thevirtualoid.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.